Hey Eurovision fam, I am so excited today because I am yet again not alone and I am being joined by honestly, I, I would say one of the front runners, not trying to jinx you girl, but one of the front runners for Festival da Consal, Portugal's national selection for Eurovision 2023. It's Mimi Cat. Yay! How are you <laughs> feeling today? Well, I'm feeling good. It's Friday, which is always a good one. So I'm going to have dinner today out of the house, out of the kids. And it's 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 a good day, yeah, actually. <laughs> I'm feeling okay. Oh, my goodness. I, I forgot. You're a mom, too. So I'm a mom. I have a two-and-a-half-year-old. Okay. I have a four-year-old. He's going to turn four in... Sorry, in one month. Oh, my, my camera just fell off. I'm sorry. <laughs> my phone. It's not my camera. It's my phone. Let me put it back on let's see if this thing sticks uh but yeah i have a four-year-old almost four-year-old and i have a almost two-month baby oh yeah oh i love oh, I, I two love boys that. Oh my goodness, two boys. Well, I, I've got a, I've got a daughter, and I will say I'm nervous about parenting a boy. I'm like, I don't know if I'm equipped. I don't know if I can run fast enough. How do you kind of balance being a creative and parenting, and and becoming a parent? Did it change you um, as a creative? Would you say did it change what you wrote? Kind of the songs you gravitate towards? Maybe yes, maybe no. Yeah, yeah, it did. It definitely did. You know, um, I always wanted to, to be a mom. You know, there was a time in my life where I always said as uh, that if people ask me, well, would you rather have a career or would you rather have a child? And I would say I would rather have a child because I was I was trying to be a mom for for a few years and I, I couldn't have the baby. You know, I couldn't get pregnant at all. It was a drama. So when I first got my 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 first pregnancy, it went smoothly and I wrote a bunch of songs, uh, but I didn't get to write a song for, for the baby. You know, I never completed a song for, for the baby. So it definitely changed the way I, I uh, saw music at the time. And that's when I started to think about writing more in Portuguese because I, I used to, to write in English. Uh, I used to think that uh, everything I wrote in Portuguese sucked. So I never wrote anything in Portuguese or a few pieces, but nothing special. So the first time I actually wrote something, well, this this song actually I was was a first because it was wrote ten. I, I wrote the song ten years ago. Yeah, and um, but then I stopped and I didn't write anything else. I didn't want to ruin it, you know. Um, but, but yeah, then I started writing in Portuguese, I don't know, maybe four years back when I was pregnant, uh, with my, with my first kid, um, because I wanted to, to offer a song to my mom and dad. They were, it was, it was their 50, 50th anniversary of their marriage and I wanted to, to give them a song. Yeah, but de it definitely changed because I wanted to write more in Portuguese. So I started, you know, uh, writing more stuff in Portuguese. Um, and I know, I don't know, it, it brought out so much strength in me, you know, the, the resilience that you need to be a mom and go through all the, the problems of motherhood at the beginning, mostly because it's so hard. It changes so much your, your mindset and everything around your body. You know, it, it just changed me a lot. Uh, and I think that brought me a lot of, of the strength I didn't have before, you know, so it changed, it changed the way I approached my career, honestly. So it made me better, I think. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. I I want to transition, I guess, a little bit because I kicked off saying that you're one of the front runners. I mean, your video on the lyric video, it's like you, Evandro, Barbara, and then Edmundo mm -hmm. as like going into the competition. I feel like this is one of the strongest years of Festival Da Consal, like since sort of, I would say, the revamp in 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar? Like, because some some people's music industries are sort of small. Are you familiar with some of your competitors? Uh, have you worked with anyone before that's actually going to be at Festival Da Consal this year? Well, no, most of my friends uh, actually were competing in other years. So... This year, I don't have, you know, a friend. <laughs> I don't, I'm familiar with, with some of them, but I'm not friends with any of them. So we're not friends. We're competing against each other. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I, w I would love to be to be friends with them. I, I think that we'll get to, to know each other more uh, as rehearsals start. So probably we'll make some beautiful friendships out of it. 
Yeah. So since you've known people who have competed before, have you gotten any advice from folks yeah. that you would be willing to share <laughs> with us? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, oh, my my friend, you, you must remember her, uh, Joana Alegre. Joana is always, you know, sending me messages. Friend, you got to do this, girl. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and she's very enthusiastic about it. So, uh, yeah, I love Joana. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. I mean, yeah. well, and Portugal's on a nice, has like some nice momentum at Eurovision uh, the past two years coming in the top 10. Does there feel like pressure or, I mean, you've, you've been a performer for quite some time now. So does it yeah. feel, do you feel sort of at ease with it or is there a little bit of pressure? Well, yeah. There's a little bit. Well, I, I wouldn't say a little bit because, you know, I, I changed my, my mindset like two days ago before, because before that I was starting to feel the pressure of not um, corresponding to the expectations, you know, because people are putting all these expectations in the song and in, and, uh, in the, the staging and the performance itself. So I was like, well, damn, what am I going to do? <laughs> If people don't like it, what am I going to do? I was like panicking a little, panicking a little, a little but you know, but I, I changed my mindset and I, I, I just thought, well, fuck it. If people don't like it, they don't like it. Well, I don't have anything to, to lose actually. So if they like it, it's a plus. Well, <laughs> way to go, girl. <laughs> but if they don't like it, well, then it is life, you know. So I just, I just, I'm just taking it uh, a little bit, li little bit more lightful now. So I'm trying to take it easier on me uh, and not forgetting to have fun, not forgetting to rest and to, you know, to enjoy the most uh, this experience, you know, because I think it's, it's a unique experience that I, that I actually need to, to enjoy, uh, enjoy the ride. Um, because I, I always wanted to, to be there, you know, I've been trying for years to get invited, you know, and they never invited me. You know? Well, we're happy to have you this year. I mean, especially like, again, I've said it before, this is one of the strongest years of FTC. Yeah. And I've been really, really enjoying the playlist. There's so many strong songs. Yeah. You know, I know you can't give away too much, but can you give us maybe a teaser or a hint of how you plan to bring the song to life on the stage? Well, my idea for, for the performance was, you know, to be faithful to the song because the song has this, so there's so many different things in the song, you know, there's so many different kinds of styles and, and kinds of music. And you have all these different kinds of sounds, you know, you have Spanish sound, you have uh, a little bit of Costa Rica, the, the, the Eastern Europe uh, kind of vibe. Then you have the popular side of Portugal with the, the, the rhythm because it's like a marcha. It, we, we called it a marcha because we have marchas populares. And it's a very popular song, and and it's in literal literal sense because you know it's it's popular. It's not pop music. It's popular. <laughs> uh, so it has all these things, and but then it has that diva kind of thing of the old you know uh, Portugal uh, vibe, you know, like Simon and uh, Manuela Bravo, you know, the old stuff from from Festival da Canção, uh, which I love. You know, I live for that kind of, of vibe. Uh, it has the cabaret, the burlesque, it has so many different things. So I, it, it was hard to bring that into the performance. Since we're a small country and this is a public event, it belongs to the state because, you know, it be belongs to public television. It, it's not supported by millions. It's, it, it has a little, you know, it's a low budget <laughs> thing. So we need to work with what we have. And, you know, it's a miracle what the the team can do the the, the organization uh, so we don't have many resources you know we, we have to work with the with what we get so I I think that the, the most of it is going to be the choreography honestly I worked with the uh, with a friend of mine I'm gonna have two dancers on stage with me and you know we tried to create a piece that was funny and strong at the same time you know it has to be funny you know people have to laugh when they watch the the, the choreography And at the same time, they have to feel the power. So we're going to put, you know, a bit of everything in the choreography, hopefully. Well, I'm really going to be looking forward to this. When I was first reacting to all the songs, I was like, oh, this is great. And in my mind, I've been doing some live Thank streams you. and people have been asking me about the song. And I'm just like, oh. lean in. I'm like, let's just go full on. I'm like, there's something about it that feels 
yeah, like kind of cabaret esque and a little yeah, bit it's of theatrical. Costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, just lean in. I'm like, I'm I'm all in. I'm just here. <laughs> I'm here for for sort of the feast. I'm like, do whatever. But oh. um, you know, ultimately, you're competing for Eurovision. Are there any songs like? Did you watch Eurovision last year? Did you have any favorites? Are there any favorites of Eurovision yesteryear songs that you might want to share with us? Well, I, I'm not a super fan of Eurovision. You know, I'm not a super fan of any TV shows, actually, because I don't see a lot of TV. <laughs> so I usually watch the performances online afterwards. So and unless I have to vote for my friends. <laughs> but but yeah, you know, my favorite one of all time, like the song was uh, Arcade from Duncan Lawrence. It was my it, it's actually one of my favorite songs of all time. I love oh, that that's yeah. wonderful because you know Duncan is actually going to be back. Uh, so the Netherlands they're having a, a duet because okay. uh, their artists have already been selected, and apparently Duncan is part of the writing team okay. uh, for the I song this year. So in theory, Duncan will sort of be back at Eurovision. Okay, okay. okay. let's 20... see what it's going to bring. Yeah, yeah, twenty twenty three. But well, I, I love, I love, I love what he does. Honestly, I'm a fan of his work. You know, I I didn't know him. Uh, and I, I started listening to Arcade at the radio station here in Portugal. Mm -hmm. uh, then I went to see the performance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Um, and, and you know, there's that. And then uh, I'm also obsessed with the performance of Chanel last ah, year. Ah, yes, yes. Damn, Burning up the girl. stage. <laughs> Burning Damn. up the stage. That girl was amazing. I feel you know, like I saw I saw the performance so much that I thought like getting to Italy and seeing it live, I'd be like, okay, I have seen no, like my jaw, I was still like, oh, she's, you know, she's a goddess. I, what she did is like very, very difficult. Oh yeah. It's very, very difficult. I, oh, yeah. I don't know that people if if people have that notion because it's it's so hard to do what she did, you know, to, to, to be able to sing in tune and dance mm -hmm. that much it's it's really really hard so i'm obsessed with that and also uh Pravi with okay Pravi. yes yeah. yes yeah you know and, and also so people... Marvel was noise and so that uh, <laughs> i mean honestly your vision has just been getting better and better yeah. i i have to say so have you heard any of the other songs at festival dock and south because i do have a question that i typically ask folks at eurovision but i think it makes sense. And so the question basically is, if you could steal someone else's song and, and make it your own and put your own spin on it, whose song would you go, okay, I'm taking that one and giving it sort of like the Mimi Cat remix? Okay, so it would have to be Nashti Maria. Ah, okay, yeah. yes, Claudia Pascual's song. Be, yeah, it would have to be Nashti Maria. Be, first of all, I'm a fan of Claudia's music. I'm I'm a huge fan. Not just that, but I'm a fan of her work in general. I love what she does. So hands down. Uh but yeah, Nasi Maria would definitely be the one I would, you know, put my spin on. Uh <laughs> but but the perfect one for me would actually be a mix in between Claudia's and Ivandru. <laughs> ah yeah. Would actually I'd... be a mix of them too, you know. It's, okay. Yeah, it would be something like that. <laughs> okay. And so what song right now is currently stuck in your head and what like artist doesn't have to be Eurovision related or anything. And what artists are you kind of just like loving their catalog right now? Let me think of, of, of my Spotify playlist at the moment. Uh, I think that I'm a little addicted to, to Yeva. Okay. And... Yeah, it's pretty much Yeva. I've been listening to a lot. Well, yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, and Jacob Banks as well. Okay, I feel yeah. like with Portugal, I love the influences of folks and and the music that everyone kind kind of listens to because it, it feels like this this wonderful kind of melting pot of like lots of different sounds, but y'all put it together and it it's still it can sound like yesteryear, but still modern. And not everyone can do that. I think that really is. Yeah. 
um, an art form. Well, I know I don't have tons of your time, but I just want to say thank you. So no, much it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Me. I took my time. I took my time for, for this interview. It's okay. <laughs> no, but thank you so much for talking thank with you. me and best of luck. Break a leg. You've got a whole bunch of people rooting for you for yeah, FDC. I know, I know. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Thanks, guys, for, you know, I've, I've been receiving so much love and messages and, and all kinds of things from, from people all over the world, honestly. I, I, I didn't even know that the Eurovision and, and Festival de Canção had such a, an, an impact. You know, I, oh, I had yeah. no idea. <laughs> I had no idea at all. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just stoked with all the the feedback i've been getting so i want to thank everyone that's watch, watching this or is going to watch this afterwards uh so yeah thank you thank you thank you for your support and thank you alicia for you know i i you know some people sent me the links that were in which you you talked about my songs so thank you <laughs> for your comments <laughs> no worries no worries and you have a wonderful wonderful day thank you so much <laughs>